Hello guys and welcome. Now, I've been struggling for a few weeks with my Husqvarna 550 with chains. Chains were going blunt. Uh, I've just been struggling. Things have just not been right. Tried a few things, nothing seems to be working. Gotta be the bar, right? Gotta be the bar. Well, oh, it's gone off that one. So this Oregon bar, I put this Oregon bar on two years ago. Yeah, maybe two years ago. So um, when I bought the 550 XP, it came with a standard Husqvarna bar. They're just not good. They're just not good. And it came with standard Husqvarna chains. So the first upgrade I could, I run this bar for, yeah, about a year. And... Um, well, I, I can show you close up. We've got uh, some flat spots, some burning. You can see a dip there, worn. Um, the wheel got stuck more than I would like and generally the bar was heating up and, and not good. So I did a standard upgrade to an Oregon bar and speed cut chains. Now I love the speed cut chains. The speed cut chains are just it's where it is for me. Um, they don't stretch, the, the angle's right, they sharpen well, they stay sharp for a long time. It's kind of quite hard to kill a speed cut Oregon chain. Um, and the bar was definitely a good move. Now by chance, so I've gone to town today, which is why we're inside, because it's now afternoon, and when you go to town here, to, you, you lose a day, that, that, that's your day gone. Um, so I've gone to town to get a replacement Oregon bar and another three sets of speed cut chains. As a lot of places, businesses just continuously close here, it's it's never ending. Eventually there's going to be, it's going to be impossible to get stuff. Uh, so anyway, so I go into the Husqvarna place, two Husqvarna stores have closed, there's just one left in town now. No Oregon stuff and he just shrugged his shoulders. So then something is in my mind, I've seen something about an X-Force bar. Husqvarna's X-Force bar. Now I know that here in Husqvarna in Sweden, and it's spelled, instead of the Q in Husqvarna, it has a K. Um, they built a new factory. And I kind of remember somebody telling me that they were now producing everything and buying in no raw materials. And the X-Force bar, that's made in here in Husqvarna in Sweden. And this is their own design and it's supposed to be upgrading to uh, make it compete with the best available bars and also to put Husqvarna right at the very top. Am I a Husqvarna man or a steel man? Well, those that you watch my channel, I use both and I use both a lot. This is my go-to saw. This is my everyday saw for limbing, for trimming, for dropping everything that's big enough for this to drop. However, I do enjoy the power of my steel. And that's not to say this is not powerful. My steel's a lot bigger, but it's heavy. And with my back and everything, I've kind of not used it so much this year. So I want to upgrade this. So we're going to upgrade it to the X-Force bar. And, uh, of course, Husqvarna don't know I exist. So, no, they haven't sent me this. I've had to buy this. And uh, I know it's it's a much lighter bar and um, it's got a ceramic coating and it's supposed to last longer. So, this is the 18-inch bar um, and it's a point, uh, 0.325 of an inch, which is uh, 1.3 mil. So this is this is their bar, and you can see from the original, this is the original Husqvarna bar, and this is the X-Force bar. And I don't know if, if you can see it, it's wider, and the radius is larger, um, which is, is quite nice. And I do a lot of uh, plunge cutting. I do a lot of plunge cutting. So it's going to be interesting to see where this is. It is a completely different makeup and different materials they've used in there. And I've also treated myself, instead of getting the Oregon Speed Cut, which I couldn't get, I've taken a gamble. And I haven't bought one, I've bought three of their new S -cut, X Cut chains. Now I say new, right? they're new to me. 
These were developed from, I think, 2015 to 2017 or 2014, 2017, when they built the factory. And again, they've mixed metals and they've messed with the angles. And um, I think it could be comparable to the speed cut, to Oregon speed cut. But they've... Um, yeah, it's it's the first time in many years Husqvarna have, have done everything in-house and built their own... Now, these chains, they say they're ready to go right on, but, you know, the the whole knot thing with chains. Um, they've used different metals than these, and they're also pre-tensioned, which should take out a lot of the stretch because one of the worst issues of a brand-new chain is the first... 15 or 20 minutes of use, you're forever tightening it. Hmm, that looks a lot different to... So those of you who've been using these for a while, probably laugh at me because I'm four or five years behind everybody else. Welcome to my world. Welcome to my world. Here where I live, we're 50 years behind the rest of the world. So there we are. Um... <laughs> I'm not even sure whether that's funny or not. Sad, but true. But it looks a lot different. And the, the reason I can say that off the cuff is, is if I didn't know, I would have said this was a speed cut chain because um, I've still got all the original standard Husqvarna chains. Uh, yeah, so we're going to... We're going to swap this over because it's been giving me a nightmare because I've, I've dragged my old chains, my Oregon speed cut chains and this bar out. And I'm pretty sure now that this bar is at the very end of its life. Even though I turn it over whenever I use it and um, every sixth or seventh sharpen, I flat edge the bar just to take the burrs off. Uh, I use it a lot. I use it an awful lot. Um, and it, it's the same as this saw. This saw's four years old, I think. I got it when they first came out, and I've rebuilt it once already. And the story behind the rebuild... I don't know if it's happened again. Have I got two in there? The story behind the required rebuild, and that was a piston, liner, everything inside... Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's done. That's really done. In fact, I'm a little bit embarrassed that I've allowed that to happen. I mean, it's pretty much on both sides. But um, yeah, that's, that's gonna be the difference. Looking at that where I'm plunge cutting on the smaller trees, our, our trees are a lot smaller here. The kind of sticks makes me laugh, but, uh, and you know somebody says, "Oh, we take this tree. It's a big one now." And no, they're big for air, but they're not big trees. So we're a little wider on there. We're quite a bit wider on there actually. So that's the the X Force, and this is the Oregon, and we're we're quite a bit wider on there. I'm not sure about the weight, they feel about, they feel about the same, if I'm honest. So I don't think it has, um, where's the original? Yeah, well that's a good thing. The originals, they had the oil hole in around the wheel. This was forever jamming on the originals. I really got frustrated with that, but this is now sealed. So that feels a lot better. Oil and holes. Are they in a slightly different position? No, because they used to block up, which the Oregons don't. Now that's quite interesting. Right. So this here, this is the original Husqvarna sword and um, it's oil feed holes around 
And, and you can see there, worth for also ever blocking up the Oregon bar. Now, I don't know what you call that word, but whatever it is, it's not straight. And it's in at an angle. I'm hoping that, that shows on camera. Um, but I'm going back now to the new X-Force, which is not so new looking because uh, obviously with my hands, the holes are round, but they're bigger. So we'll, we'll see. But it's been tested for long enough. You would like to assume, should I put that on upside down to start with, just to wind everybody up? Those that you know, know. I've had a few questions since I've been here. Why my bar is on upside down? So I suck through my teeth, because... Anyway, I'll tell you a story. I don't know if I've told that story. Well, I'll tell it again. On the question of why is your bar on upside down, well, for those of you who don't know, whenever you sharpen or change your blade, you roll your bar. You get even wear. Anyway, so uh, a few years ago, I'd been asked to uh, take these trees down and um, I've gone down to the site and I'm getting all my stuff ready and I've rolled a cigarette and I'm, I'm smoking a cigarette and uh, I'm, you know, getting, filling up the oil in my chainsaw and I get my petrol out and undo the cap and I get the petrol can out and undo the cap, take a puff of my cigarette, I'm still smoking. Guy's asked me to do a job, he's off. He's like an Olympic sprinter. Where's he going? Don't understand. Anyway, so I finished up, you know, fueling up, and locked everything else up, finished my cigarette, put that out properly. And uh, he comes back, he says, you're mad, you're mad. He said, you're, you're, you're filling up petrol, using, and he says, you're smoking. You're gonna set us all on fire, blow us up. I didn't demonstrate putting out a cigarette in petrol and the fact that you can't ignite petrol with a cigarette. I thought, if you've got to that age and you don't know that, what was you doing when you was a kid? Because, you know, anyway. So, uh, yeah, interesting experience. Definitely an interesting experience. Yeah, that's interesting. So I think, um, the, I didn't do a video yesterday. In fact, I haven't done a video in a few, in a few days now, although I've been doing some filming. Um, I've got nothing complete because I've been doing little bits and pieces. And um, I was back on the big tree felling job. And um, what a nightmare I had with that chain and bar. And I just sharpened the chain and I'm thinking, well, it can't be, it can't be that because I've just done that. And uh, turns out it was the bar. So, where's me old, that's a long way down there. Well, that just goes to show you how stretched my chains were. I have, I have strung them out and I have sharpened one, well, two of them are right down to the line, so there's nothing left on them. So it was definitely, uh, it was definitely time. I don't know how I feel about putting uh, the old Husqvarna bar back on there. Let's get a little, and we'll see where we go. to um, pre-oil it.
normally things like this would be uh, done at the beginning of the winter but I'm far from um, I'm far from finished cutting this season we have a lot still on the big job on the other side of the valley um, to cut and uh, there's still firewood to deal with and okay that's very it's very tight in there tight in the bar do I need to make sure I've no that's right so apparently the ceramic coating on the X-Force means the logo for those that are orange men <laughs> the logo stays longer i'm um i'm not a logos man so are they important uh, yeah i suppose uh, yeah am i a mercedes or a bmw man dodge if i was honest and um, but i drive both i like both they both have their benefits husqvarna still they both got their benefits so uh it'd be interesting to find out if that has actually got any twists in them and what the difference between hmm it definitely doesn't look like, I've got to say, these uh, X-Cut. So what I'm using here, oh, I did say that, didn't I? It's the 18-inch uh, 325s or the SP33G is what they're called, but the X-Cut doesn't look visually. And the rivets are bigger. Well, none of that really matters. What matters is how it cuts. So we've got three chains there, so I, I'm hoping, well, I'm really hoping, and I've never used any of this uh, latest Husqvarna stuff because the original stuff, it, it, it's, um, yeah, I think it's good enough if you're, uh, you know, uh, if you've got land or stuff, but as a professional, when you're out cutting every day, it, it it was frustrating it, it was frustrating like i say the bar would block up all the time this has got bigger oil holes i'm hoping the oil feed goes goes better and there's a reason for that chain oil right i just i don't know how but i don't use a manufacturer's chain oil and i've never used a manufacturer's chain oil i'm not sure if i want to disclose what i run in my oil tank but it's definitely not out of a nice shiny bottle saying chain oil has it ever caused me a problem no do i get excessive wear well you can see from the amount of time that my bars last definitely not is it free absolutely so uh i'm all for that have i got to run petrol benzene gasoline two stroke yes because i can't get that for free if i could i would okay so that's that fitted I think in order to find out what I feel about it, we should go and run it. And what we should do, well, I think I should run that up and just see if that that eases. I'm reluctant to give it any more play. I don't think it's too tight, but I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe we should back it off a little and then see what it feels like. Yeah, maybe I'd over tighten that. Do you want to do that on a new chain? That's the fastest way to burn your bar out. Right. Let's go run that see what we've got and see how it feels and then we'll also be able to tell from the lag on the the engine but in order to do that accurately it means I've got to use it without 
and it, it rings in my head. Right, we'll take that because we might need that. I'm hoping we don't need that. Let's go test it out. Now I'd like to do a comparison with the new X cut and the speed cut. But I couldn't get any speed cuts. So let's see how this feels going through here. inch bar on this 550 with a new blade like that certainly not on hardwood you would uh you'd have to give it a bit more time but that was no pressure for me that was just sliding through uh, how do i feel about that well it was smooth it was easy um the bite was really controllable all the way through the cut but i had to do a couple of three four plunge cuts because that's smooth that's really smooth. So the, the, uh, the plunge cut over the still, over the Oregon bar and the original Husqvarna bar is so smooth. That, that's the smoothest plunge cut I've ever done. What I've just done out there is by way the smoothest plunge cut. Just beautiful. So my initial impressions are impressive. Um, it's smooth, it's controllable. I would never run a chainsaw without some kind of ear protection because I can hear it for the next eight hours and then it whistles and pops and bangs. It's great. No, it, no, it, no it's not. So uh, anyway, there we go. So that's the Husqvarna x Force bar or sword and the, um, the X-Cut uh, chain on an 18 inch on the 550 XP. Um, yeah. I'm happy with that. So the real test is going to be time. How many hours I can put into this bar and on these chains and how they firstly hold their their sharpness. Now, Husqvarna say they've changed the angle of the cut uh, because it, the angle of the cut depends on how aggressive or how unaggressive it is. And therefore how quickly it uses its sharpness or not as the case may be so we've got some big trees to fell left back over the other side of the valley which have got to come down that's a real world test and then limbing them up and just see how it copes um, and at the end of that normally 
a speed cut chain would would be dull and would need a, a, a sharpen so that's going to be the real world test and I'll update you on that we'll get back over there later this week or beginning of the next week within the next few days and we'll take down those big ones and we'll see where we are but for today's test that's a reasonable sized tree for here and um, that's good I like it it's smooth it's controllable felt good this saw has not run so well or hasn't felt so good or been so usable for weeks maybe months I might have dragged it out a bit long trying to get every penny out of everything I've got on it but inexpensive it was the other thing I was surprised about is the price compared so the price compared to the X-Force Husqvarna bar was very good compared to the Oregon bar and the same with the chains so that's it I'm happy I'm pleased that's the upgrade on the saw thanks for joining me today if you're new consider subscribing doesn't cost anything, but it's going to help me out. Thanks very much and goodbye for now.